Hello there. If I look really excited today, it's because I am. Uh, normally, when I shoot videos, I get a little bit nervous, a little bit stifled because it's a topic I'm a little bit unsure about or I'm, not, I'm worried I'm not going to get the message across properly. But I'm really happy today because today is the topic I've been meaning to cover for ages and I know it's going to be something that's going to help all of you a lot. It's something I wish I had that was out there you know, when I was doing research into TRT and testosterone replacement therapy before. So I think it's only about time that I get this out. And so you're probably wondering why I'm sitting on the side and I've got this whole space open over here. Well, that's because I'm going to put up a nice graph because today we're going to be talking about testosterone levels, everything that you need to know about that. So if my video editor will be so kind as to put up the graph over here, right over there now, very good. So today what I'm going to do is, as you can see on the graph that's showing over here now, it's showing you basically a chart or a graph of male testosterone levels and how they decline with age. And what I'm going to do to you today, or what I'm going to do with you today, not to you, that would be kind of kinky, what I'm going to do with you today is I'm going to explain to you the different levels, you know, what each of them are, starting with the low levels up to the optimal levels, and explain to you all the different levels and ranges that can help give you a clearer understanding of where you should be or maybe where you are and where other people are. And, you know, that, that could help you in future when, you know, speaking to your doctor. Now, the levels that are displayed on the graph over here, as you can see, are in nanograms per deciliter, which is a common unit used for measuring testosterone levels. And you can see that it starts at zero and ends at a thousand. Now, before we go into that, I just want to let you know that I am not a medical professional and I, you shouldn't take this uh, information I'm giving you as gospel and science, right? It's based on research and a bit of my own personal experience. This graphic that's on the screen is something I got off the web. It's the most accurate one that I could find. But obviously, different labs have different kind of... Um, ranges that they use for measuring your testosterone level but this one I found to be the most comprehensive because it also shows the age and it goes starts at the bottom at, from zero and goes up to a thousand so um, yeah you know as always just use this as kind of uh, information but always consult your physician if you are going to take any sort of action regarding testosterone replacement therapy or anything health related okay so I think that covers my intro let's get stuck into the meat of things right so as you can see on this graph over here, it shows you the average uh, testosterone levels for men and how they decline with age. So you can see like a man who's 20 years old, you know, he, he should have an, on average a very high level of testosterone at around about 900. And as men get older, it's along 30, 40, 50, up to 70 years, that, uh, t those T levels decline till about you know, 300, 250 to 300 when a man hits 70, right? Now, the whole purpose of testosterone replacement therapy is to get optimal levels, right? So if you're a man of 70 years old and you're at levels of 250, 300, that's not great. And I think that's why a lot of older people get TRT because they want to have the levels that they had when they were 20 or 30 years old. And when they do get that, as everyone can attest to, that gets TRT treatment, they feel fantastic, they feel young again, they've got all that vitality and uh, general well-being that they had when they were younger. So it's definitely a strong case to get your levels checked and to understand what's going on and where you are and how you fit in. So if you look at someone who's 20 years old, that you know the, this graph shows that you should be somewhere around 900. That's wishful thinking, right? Like a lot of guys, I'm, uh, you know, between my 30s and 40s, I was nowhere near 800 or 700. I was more along the lines of 350 to 400, right, personally. So I actually think this graph is a best case scenario. Like if you can have levels like this, you should be, you should be very happy. So you can see that it declines with age. And let's have a look at what all the different ranges are that doctors and endocrinologists and guys like us in the TRT community talk about. So I'm going to start with low and work my way up. Okay, so let's start with the clinically low range. When I say clinically low, this is the level that are kind of prescribed in doctor and endocrinologist textbooks where if your levels are at this point or lower, there's no questions asked. Usually, you know, you qualify for some sort of TRT 
based on other things like your symptoms and, and, and that as well, but that is usually around about 200. So you can see, uh, I obviously can't point it here, I don't have a whiteboard unfortunately, but you can see on the graphic of displaying where 200 is. If your levels are 200, usually that's what they will consider clinically low the clinically low range from 200 and below. Sometimes that's a little bit more than that depending on the lab, but 200 is the clinically low. Then you have what they call the low range, which is between 200 and 400. And that is, that is kind of a gray area because sometimes based on the doctor, based on the clinic, based on the endocrinologist, they will consider that not low enough for TRT but some people will, right? So it all depends on who you talk to and uh, a lot of other things. And especially like here in the UK, you get sort of politics and, and bureaucracy involved where they do their best not to give you. So in the UK, for example, if you're, if you're not below 200, they're almost never going to give you TRT. Even if you're just slightly above it and you've got all the symptoms, they're not even willing to listen to your case, as I've had personal experience with. Anyway, that's another story for another time. So let's look at the low to mid range. That's about 400 to 600. So the low to mid range is about 400 to 600, which is on par with kind of the average of a 40 year old, right? Then you have the mid to upper range, which is about 600 to 800, which is fairly decent levels. And then you have the high range or the upper range, which is 800 to 1000 and beyond, right? And obviously that's, I think the ideal, well, we'll get to the optimal, right? So the optimal levels that you want to see, I think, you know, independent of age, should be somewhere between 600 to 900. If your testosterone levels are between 600 to 900, that's good levels to be at. You're only going to see positive results from that, and you should really just feel great and have a lot of strength and a lot of confidence and motivation and energy, right? That these, the, from all the research I've done, this is really the optimal levels that you want to get at and the levels that you should aim for uh, typically. Now, let's look at what the really high amounts do. Like, let's take, a look, for example, the guys that are on steroids that, you know, take excessive amounts of testosterone that they go off the charts. So these guys that are taking steroids usually will be past a thousand. They will be a thousand and beyond. You know, they'll go to a thousand, thousand five hundred. I'm not even sure how high it goes. I'm sure, I don't even know. I suppose it goes as high as the labs are willing to test. But the minute you get out of the normal range, right? And if you started to head to like 900, 1000 and above that, that's when you kind of get into the danger zone because that's above natural levels and then you start seeing all the side effects. And so when you get those side effects, you have to start taking additional drugs to combat those side effects and it gets into this whole you know, complicated scenario that you really don't want to get into. But I'm sure a lot of the bodybuilders and that community have a lot of experience with. So maybe it's better that they talk about it and not me. Right? So let's look at the goals for normal testosterone replacement therapy, right? So normally, if you're going to go into testosterone replacement therapy, you're going to have testosterone levels somewhere, if, if you do it according to like the strict clinical uh, uh, levels, you have to have 200 below. But a lot of doctors are, are, you know, want, will base it on the symptoms, which is the correct way to diagnose low T. If you're having a lot of the symptoms of low testosterone, that's a good way to start, you know, determining whether you do have low T or not. So let's say you have symptoms, but you're somewhere between 200 and 400, right? They're still going to consider giving you TRT then. Now, when you do start treatment, if you, if you want to get to like a good range, you probably want to look at somewhere between 500 and 700 you know that's where i think on average most people get to some a bit lower maybe some a bit higher depending on where they started but 500 to 700 is a good range that you want to aim for and that for most people should uh, get rid of most of the negative side effects of low testosterone okay now obviously it's not optimal it's not in the high end of the range but it's good enough and i know for me it worked wonders uh just to get into that range but for you know for other people they might want a bit higher because it's it's sufficient enough but it's not optimal so what would you aim for for optimal levels of trt well then you're looking at somewhere between maybe 600 and 900 those would be optimal because then you're at the high end of the range then not only do you get the normal 
uh, benefits of having normal testosterone levels such as well-being you know energy that kind of stuff but also you're going to see a lot more gains in strength and things like that because you're at the higher end of the range and obviously the higher t testosterone you have you know the more of those benefits you see it just makes sense now those those are the different levels um, i would have liked to have shown like kind of lines to this to, uh, explain each one but hopefully you can see by the numbers that i was calling out you know what they mean and just to give you a bit of context uh, to how I fit into all of this, when I started out, my testosterone levels were around about, when I, and this was when I was like 29, 30, and I'm 36 now. So when I was like 29, 30, my testosterone levels were at about 300 to 330, right? So if you look at 300, 330 on the chart, you're going to see a, that's almost like someone that's 65, 70 years old, right? So that's definitely not optimal, even though... Um, yeah, okay, so, so I was around there. Then I had, to, I had uh, my doctor in South Africa prescribe TRT. She looked at my symptoms first, and then she did the blood work. They came back and she said, let's try TRT, see how it goes, and it worked wonderfully, and my levels went up to about 550. So even at 550, it's not that high, but it's definitely a lot higher than it was before, and it took away all my symptoms, and 550 is at a level of about, I'd say maybe a 45-year-old man. So I guess I could have gone higher, but I wasn't complaining because I felt fantastic. And I lived with that for, you know, the next couple of years. Then I came to the UK and I was struggling to get TRT from the NHS. My testosterone levels dropped and they dropped till I was about 220. They made me come off TRT completely because they wanted to test me. They, keep, they kept testing me. My levels were, were like starting at like 300, 330. And then they drop slowly, they drop slowly, they drop slowly every time they tested me. And they said if I get to around about 250, they were willing to, uh, to prescribe me TRT. And then the story changed and they said, no, nope, they're not going to do it. They wouldn't need me below 200. They worried that my testosterone levels might increase again uh, naturally. So they wanted me to wait another six months and I said, no ways I'm doing that. So then I found another TRT doctor through the community, which I've spoken about in other videos on how to find a TRT prescribing doctor. And they, he switched me to, um, from the Bido, which is like a once injection every two months, to a, um, a test E, which is test, testosterone enanthate, uh, small amounts, but more frequently. And then my testosterone levels went up to about 650, 700, which is a lot better, right? So I'm really happy with that. And that is why I'm a big fan and supporter of trying to find a TRT prescribing doctor that knows what they're doing and that can get you to at least high-ish levels, but optimal levels where possible. And that's what you kind of should aim for. Most, most of the guys in the TRT community that I chat with and that, they're all sky high. I mean, my levels aren't that high yet and I doubt they'll ever get that high, but they, I mean, li literally within the 800 to 900 plus range, you know, maybe not past a thousand though. But so they like literally... They do their blood work to the T and they do measure it so accurately and they do everything they can to get their levels optimal and their results are fantastic. So, um, yeah, so I've spoken about the NHS and also like, you know, a lot of physicians will look at the 200 to 300 level and say, no, nope, that's good enough for you, you know, but if you look on the chart, you've got the levels of a 7 year old. Now, really, is that the levels that you want to be living with for the rest of your life? If you know what having good T feels like, you will never let anyone let you drop down to that level again in your life because it feels like hell and um, you, you, you make a plan and you have to make a plan because maybe you don't know any better right now. Your levels are around about 250, 300, 400 and you've got all the symptoms but your doctor's telling you you don't qualify. Find another doctor because you want optimal levels. Nothing beats the feeling of having uh, normal levels of testosterone or even optimal levels of testosterone. So do what you can to get out of that funk and find a prescribing doctor. Right, so that's it. I hope this information helped you to understand the different levels of testosterone and what the normal ranges are, what the low ranges are, what the optimal levels are. And yeah, I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, please share this with other people who might you know, get some benefit from understanding the different testosterone levels and how it can benefit them. And yeah, if you like this video, just click like. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Adios.